cheesy intro music. <laughs> it works. What did you think of that? Ooh, I'll turn it off. Okay. What's up, Mr. John Vreeman? Not much, man. What's happening, Mr. Steve? Ah, you know. Day, uh, was this my third, our third, third podcast? You're my third guest. Uh, third? Yep. I had right. another guy on the other day. Yesterday. No. Two days ago. Yep. Third time's the charm. We'll see. Yeah. We'll <laughs> see. Could crash and burn. <laughs> this could be the last one. We don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, was, I was told by my probation officer that I had to do it, so I'm here. <laughs> yeah, well, cheers to that. There you go, cheers. <laughs> yeah, All right. So, let's tell everybody a little bit about you. Yes, sir. We're, uh, I guess let's start from the beginning. So, your poor mother had to <laughs> push that giant melon out. <laughs> Where did this take place? <laughs> so, yeah, I was... Uh, Hinsdale, Illinois, um, does outside of Chicago, and it really was uh, a situation like that. Yeah, I was the youngest of three, and uh, yeah, when uh, she was supposed to go into labor and didn't, and the uh, the doctor, and my father, started talking about a Black Hawk game, and completely ignoring her, and she got so po'd that she wanted to labor and started pushing, and uh, yeah, that'll, get, that'll get, show them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they got to the doc. They got to the shoulders, and the uh, doctor said, "Oh, sh-, you know." <laughs> and he's here. Yeah, yeah. So, That's, so where is where is that at? Is that north? It's northwest. Yeah, it's the northwest suburbs. Okay. So I was born in Hinsdale, and then I was raised in uh, Lagrange Park, which is just a few miles away. And then I got drugged down here, kicking and screaming at fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. So great time you to- spent most of your childhood. Uh, elementary school, middle school, yeah. all that kind of stuff up yeah. there. Up in Illinois, yeah. How's the uh, dealing with the snow and? Yeah, yeah, a little, and, a little it, different than here. Yeah, and and my dad had health issues, so my brother and I were basically the uh, snow team. Ah. Uh, you know, they have long driveways on the side of the house, so you had to like shovel the driveway out, and that was you. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was like, you know, moved to Florida. And it's like, okay, we don't have to shovel heat. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, just sweat your ass off. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, school, did you, uh, like, play any sports or? Yeah, I played some ball, and I wrestled. Um, I tried doing, uh, you know, different different sports. I played baseball, uh, like little league kind of thing. Okay. Uh, I was, I, it was uh, actually pretty decent at that. I all-star a couple of years, and I uh, enjoyed that. But uh, then I, I got when I came down here, I bounced around. I went from Dunedin, then they then they started doing the split sessions with Countryside, and then I went to Northside Christian for a year, and I went back to Countryside. I was like, just get me out of here. <laughs> so you wanted out of school? Yeah, pretty much. Because I mean, by the time you, you know when you're 15 and you get you know and you move down, everyone's already you know you got your circle of friends and your cliques that you run with and. So it really wasn't getting anywhere. Yeah. Uh, just the guys in the neighborhood kind of thing. So, which was fine. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was a Sunset 19 area. All right. So, um, so three brother or two brothers. One brother, one, one brother, sister. One brother, one sister. Yeah. You're the youngest. Yeah. So you got beat up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all, the, all the time. That explains a lot. Now, we, now we know. <laughs> now we know. Yeah, all the time. So I was, you know, I was always someone was messing with, the, you know, messing with my brother. I mean, he'd bring his dates home, you know, and I'd be like on the front porch, you know, because they had the enclosed front porch, and you could wave to him and sit there wave while he's kissing him goodbye. He'd like run inside and chase me out the back of the house uh, and down the back porch and across the street into the just beat yeah, the crap yeah, out of him. Yeah, a little cock blocker. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, so you. Wrap up school here. What you know? What did you do after school? What, like first jobs and stuff like that. What oh you- man! So uh, first jobs after school. I did. Uh, I think probably the, the job I had the most fun with was aerial photos, hanging out of airplanes. Oh yeah! They didn't. You didn't use the drone. They didn't, they didn't have drones. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have drones. We, so we, they had ratchet straps and yeah. a you know and a camera. You yeah, yeah, hang we'd, out. yeah. We'd we'd rent the plane. Pull the pull the pin on the doors, put like the nylon harness on, and hook it into the 
Looking into the body, it was a little Cessna. He used like I think it was a one seventy two or one fifty two. One had struts. I can't remember which one it was, but one had struts off the wings and would get in the way of the shot, and the other one didn't. So that was the one that was, you know, the optimal use. Wow. And How then, uh, long did you do that for? I think about a year and a half. What made you quit? That sounds uh, like a cool job. It, well, we had to rent the we had to rent the pilots and the pilot. Uh, I thought the pilot asked me, and I'll, I'll never forget where I was. I was. There's a there used to be a Purse League Lawn and Garden Center on Michigan and Alton 19 in Dunedin. And I thought the pilot said, Are you getting it? And I said, Yeah. And the next thing I know, he banks the sucker. I mean, it's just I mean, we're like we go vertical, the wings are vertical. And I just I just grabbed my boss's camera, which was at that point in time like a five thousand dollar piece of equipment. It's a big box and it had like handles on the side and a thumb trigger and it's a cable attached to the battery behind us. And I just threw the thing back. I mean, I just chucked it and grabbed a hold of the, grabbed a hold of the doors and pushed myself back in. I just looked at the pilot. I'm screaming. I'm like, down, down, down. Get this thing on the ground right now. I'm done. Get it out. <laughs> and then, yeah, so it's it, it was pretty much a an immediate decision. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I would want to, like, strap myself in right at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, well, take off. Even, even when you were strapped in, though. I mean, when he goes vertical like that and you're hanging – yeah. You know, I mean, I wasn't like this size when then, but I was still a big boy. And it's like, so you're hanging out and have to push yourself back into the plane. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was done. So I did, but I did that. And, um, and then, uh, that was the most interesting gig. And then, uh, the, the most meaningful one, I guess was working with my kids, you know, when I did the, the counseling. Yeah. With so a group of them. when, uh, when did you start doing that? Um, I came home, um, I did a, a brief stint in the Navy and I came home and I started going to, um, St. Pete junior college and I had a buddy of mine that was working with him and I just thought, you know, like he was like taking kids out and, you know, teaching them manners and doing stuff with them and trying to get them to be more responsible. And it didn't sound like it was like, you know, brain surgery. So I went, I interviewed for that at that point in time and that was like 80, uh, late mid eighties, I guess. Um, so I did, so I, I went and interviewed with that and I got hired on, um, to an agency and, uh, I liked it. I was working with, you know, in group homes with, uh, really emotionally disturbed kids and kids that had been damaged and neglected. And, uh, so I started doing that and then that agency got sold and I went to another agency, but I, I stayed for, uh, I did it for 30 years. The average burnout rate was 18 months. So that wow. explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, 12 kids, 12, 12 adolescent boys in a, in a group home at now one Now you time. live at the home with them? Or no, no, we worked. Bit... We did shift work, yeah. Okay. And uh, and 30 years, I worked one shift at a girl's home. That's <laughs> it. One done. That's enough. That was enough. <laughs> boys understood physics to a point. Yeah. You know, they got to a point where they were going off and they were, you know, it's like, okay, this is a really large object. I just need to dial it down. Girls are going, okay, oh, this is a really large object, so I'm going to turn it up to 14. Yeah, and just, I'm going to yeah. start scratching and yeah. clawing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Wow. So that was a lot of fun. So 18 years. Oh, 30 years doing 30 that. Years, 30, 30 years. 30 years doing that. Wow. So what kind of interesting situations do you get in when you're dealing with, when you're taking these, these guys out and, Doing oh, stuff with them, you know we'd we'd have uh, we'd have kids just wander off, um, and then you have to go uh, get them back. And we have kids that would run away from the, from the group home. I had one kid; um, he was I think about seventeen, and he goes running down. He just ran out of the group home. He goes taking off, and he's running down Central Avenue in St. Pete. Wow! And so I'm I'm chasing out after him. There's like all these workers. I was like, stop keeping up with them. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was doing all right, and uh, so I'm, I'm yelling at these workers to stop the kid, and they're just like, "No, no, no, we're not going to." So finally, I got to a point because he had assaulted a kid in the house, mm. and uh, I caught up to him in the bank parking lot, and you know, you we moved. Everything was like you try to keep it low key as possible. Yeah, um, you didn't want to hurt anybody. You wanted to maintain safety, and you didn't want to involve outside agencies as much as possible. And, so I'm chasing after this kid and asking, you know, asking these guys to stop. And the construction workers are like, nope, 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 stand there, you know, on their shovels. Nope, not touching them. And uh, 
kid ends up going down, so I just end up, uh, you know, holding him. I'm waiting for, you know, a couple of my coworkers to come and help me out, de-escalate the whole situation and everything. This lady comes out of the bank. She goes, don't worry about a thing. I called the police. I was like, oh, great. Of course, you know, <laughs> something like that. They send out two police cars. They send out mm-hmm. a fiery truck. They send out EMS. Yep. And here come the construction guys that didn't want to get involved, and now they're all around us. And it's like, oh, perfect. So... There's some yeah. big guy assaulting this child. Yeah, uh, well, and he was a big kid too. He was, uh, yeah. I mean, some of some of my kids. I mean, I'm six two, but some of those kids were, you know, six four, six five, looking down at me. Yeah. So it was. I when still they keep, get when they get wild. What do you do about that? Because like, they can take you. Yeah, yeah. You had it like you had to physically restrain and mm. you know keep them safe. And they sent me to, you know, um, de-escalation training out of the University of Oklahoma at the National Youth Resource Center and. Uh, a lot of stuff going with that, and it was just a, it was good. I mean, I liked, I liked working with my kids. It was, yeah. it was the bureaucracy that was, because that was, those kind of things were few and far between. Then you had things like, you know, you had twelve boys living together, and you'd set parameters for them, and they'd come home from school and give each other crap about girlfriends and things like that. It's like, all right, you can do that in the house. The second you set foot outside the house, manners go up, and you know, respect goes up, and so we had all these kids with. Felony records and everything, and we'd send them to school, and the teachers were like, they've got the best manners. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, it was great. It was great. It was like, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, and yeah, they did a good job. That's good. So most of these kids don't have a family? Yeah, most of them. Well, we had some. We ran, um, it was a, uh, we had a pilot program. So we would take them on Sunday evenings and work with them until Friday evening, and we'd send them home for the weekend. And they were supposed to apply what they learned in the group home and the families were supposed to apply what they learned in therapy sessions. Okay, and so the, there's a double. Parents are doing therapy sessions and trying to learn coping skills and yeah, and better like parenting that. skills and things like that. Yeah, you know, and and, and better management. You know, if, if um, you know if they were having a hard time or if the kid was having a hard time, they try to implement those things, and uh, it, inevitably it ended up working out more times than not. It was like you know one step forward and two steps back mm-hmm. each weekend. So when we started working with foster kids where they didn't have a family, the progress was much better. Oh, really? Because, yeah, because the kids were with us all the time. Yeah. So they just, they kind of. don't have those steps back. Yeah, and they just got to know what, what they were capable of. And their expectations on. and stay yeah. in line. Yeah. And so they did a much better job with that. Yeah. The problem came was when, when they were 18, they would just age out of the system and, you know. Everybody just go, oh, they're 18 now. <laughs> it's like, yeah. all right, well, now we got to get them set up for life. Right. So, you so had to teach other them. programs after 18 for them? Not really, not at that time. No. Yeah. And so, um, but anyways, yeah, long and short of it is when they started cutting the mental health budget, um, I just kind of looked at it and went, yeah. I've gone 30 years. I haven't had any significant incidents. No, not nothing. No, no, i you know, in in that field, you get investigated. You know, because you know some kid comes up with a bump or a bruise or something like that, and from being restrained, and um, so they come and check things out. So I had been investigated like four times um, over thirty years, which is to be expected. Yeah. But everything was cleared out, so never had any significant problems. And I was like, you know, I've been I've been pretty fortunate. You know, because there's twelve kids at a time. So I mean, you do right. the math and. And uh, I was like, yeah, maybe it's just time to get out. And so I started, that's why I started looking at real estate and and getting with that and going to school and signing with the big box. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out great. <laughs> yeah. So um, during that time, you meet Mary, yep. your wife. Yep. I met her through uh, my buddy Pat um, through the storm. Through the Tampa Bay storm? Yeah. He team taught with Mary. At West Tampa Elementary. Okay. And then he was playing part-time for the storm. So Mary would take his class, and he would go to practice and things like that. And uh, I was kind of their lead idiot in the end zone. I'd just climb up and scream and do all this kind of stuff, and everybody was like, oh, you were hammered. I was like, no, I'm <laughs> stone cold sober during the game. It's like, I don't do anything before or during the game. Could you yeah. imagine if he did? Yeah, right. <laughs> I used to wear soccer uh, shin pads and climb the rails and stuff, and and uh, so some guy came up from uh, from the newspaper, from all the newspapers, and said, uh, "He goes, hey, Spurdudo wants to meet you." So I was like, "Oh, cool." He says, "Yeah." He goes, "We were talking." And I said, "If there's anybody from the team that you haven't met yet that you'd like to, or from the league, who would it be?" He goes, "There's this crazed redhead in the end zone." 
<laughs> so he and I met, and we were just we were instantly boys. I mean, that's the thing. He's he's like a brother to me. So um, he introduced me to Mary. Uh, I'd gone through a divorce, and he kind of jammed uh, jammed us down each other's throats. So we laughingly describe it as eh at first sight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he was so merciless about it. It's like when we finally met, it's like eh, eh, nice to meet you. Yeah. So. But she's great, and she just works her tail off. She's and she's still working with her with kids. So, yeah, she's still teaching. What does she do? She runs the reading recovery program for Hillsborough County, like and, for the whole county. Like yeah. she oversees the entire county. Yeah, that's yeah. a big job. And it just yeah, it just doubled in size. So yeah, so I'm wow. glad that today was the first day of school. <laughs> she's back. <laughs> she's Out she gets to, she gets to go and she gets like all teachers. I think it's inherent that teachers get wound up the week before. Oh, for sure. School. Um, but she, since she's taken on this reading recovery thing, she gets wound up like two months before. And they're doubling the size. And it is just her. So, like, there's other reading recovery programs with the same, um, from the same um, Ohio State University is where it comes from uh, throughout the state, but they've got more support. It's just her. Wow. So she's been like. I know my wife, she did. Um... She was a reading coach for yeah. Pasco. Yeah. And uh That's how Mary started was doing the reading coach thing. Yeah, that's uh I don't know, it's tough cuz y- you have students that you know you can help and then like the parents don't seem to Yeah. They won't sit down and read with the kid or get them to do yeah. They don't get involved and, at all. Yeah. And yeah. that's and that's kind of I think that's that was our common ground was that we both had that kind of thing yeah. happen. I had the same thing happen with my kids. It's like, you know, Kids You're trying, children. and then the parents aren't. Yeah, and then they'll point the finger. Yeah, oh yeah. They're like, oh, this is your fault. You're you work with them every day, so why aren't you fixing these problems? Yeah, it's like, well, you're supposed to help out a little too. Yeah, you got to reinforce some of the stuff that we're teaching. Yeah, and they, you know, and it's like you're supposed to have the kids set and ready to go for the week and everything. And they come back and clothes weren't clean. They didn't have their meds and. Uh, yeah, it's like, I, that's got to be a major deal because if they skip some of these meds yeah their levels yeah and they're they're off for the whole you gotta it's got to readjust again but we'd have to go back at, we'd have to go out to the houses we'd yeah. have to we'd have to drive back out to the house and like sit there and knock on the door and try to you know and try to get it and it's just it was crazy yeah so and, you know and you got to be really good friends with local law enforcement officers and things like that because you had you have your typical officer that would typically show up or like a yeah, they when when you'd call up, they they'd be familiar with who okay. you know with, with with the agency, so they'd send out somebody who had worked with us before. And, they understand. You know, yeah, and I'd have, on. I'd have I'd have I'd have safety cops looking at the kids going, you know, I'd rather get shot at than deal with your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But you know, it just it it made them aware of, you know, the kids didn't think it was any big deal, you know, and, and it was a big deal, you know, they take off run away and do something stupid like shoplift or something you know so do kids stuff yeah and uh and they would just and but like when when we were kids typical kids you know when you get caught it's like oh yeah i'm gonna just shut up i'm in trouble yeah with they don't they're like no whatever yeah they just amp it up (laughs) yeah so yeah let me out so i can go do it again tomorrow yeah yeah wow so uh now you're in real estate what do you think of that? <laughs> well, when I when I started, less headaches or more headaches? Uh, um, different, different headaches. Different headaches. I guess every job is going to have its headaches. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, you know, it's just it's 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 more stuff that's that's there's less control of, and you have to navigate. Yeah, you know. So you have to you have to learn, and that's why when like when I went to the big box company, I won't even mention it, but it, you know, you can mention it. You just can't be talking shit about anybody. No, 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 it's just, <laughs> it just you know, it was just you know, it sound, sounded like Huttenberg rhymed with, but um, yeah. But when I went to them, they just kind of turned you loose. It's like okay, so I went to school, and basically it's it's like okay, so I took the test, and I can, and I can pass the test. Right, and, and now I'm out here, and they're just like, "Go, fly, be free," and you're like, "Uh, where's a contract?" Yeah, exactly. How what, do you what, fill one out? What, 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 what do I do? What does this mean? They didn't show you any of this. Yeah. in school. Yeah. So, and they, they, 
I had the opportunity to go join a, a quote unquote team, and that didn't work out very well. Because um, teamwork, when you're that new, uh, a lot of places are just like, you know, you're going to do the grunt work, you're going to do all the crap so mm-hmm. the stuff that I don't want to do. So, you know, you're, you're going to do the crap that the higher ups don't want to do. Yeah. Showing, don't have time for. And, yeah, like showing rental properties, you know, and, and like having like open houses in a rental property. And uh, there was one that I remember rental. that, that uh, <laughs> I'm doing this open house for this rental property and all these people are coming through and the, the best applicants were this group of kids from USF. Well, the realtor that put me out there didn't bother telling me that the HOA won't allow any multifamily structure. You can't have college kids living there. Mm. So it's like, oh, that's great. So I wouldn't even like show them, you know, I would just say, sorry, it's not going to work out for you because yeah. it's not loud and not wasting anybody's time. So instead I wasted five people's time and I got five people hot at me. And well, so probably better off. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, and that's part of the thing that brought me here. Yeah. You know, and then my buddy Chad's like, you got to meet Mike. And, you know, met him like way back in the day when we were at the old office and it was just, you know, a few of us and, and, so uh, who's Chad? Uh, Terenza, he, he knew, I don't know, he knew Mike because I think Caleb and his, and his son, Andrew played ball together. Okay. So that's how they met was on the baseball field. Shocking. Mike would meet somebody through baseball, but. Um, well, he doesn't like to talk to people when he's, uh, yeah, out no. and about. No, not he's not very, uh, he's not very, uh, he's not very sociable. Yeah. 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 He's pretty just standoffish. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, I, so I, I came in and met Mike and, uh. You know, he's like, yeah, this is what I'll teach, and this is what we'll do. And he goes, I love teaching, and we just talked for the longest time that I met you, and I didn't, you know, didn't, you know, disqualify just because of you. Um, <laughs> well, I know you didn't was, like me at first. <laughs> and it was, who was it, who was it at first? It was me, you, Brady. Um, Jeff was in and out of the office every once in a while. Yeah, I think uh, we had... Um, Man, was oh. was that the old fifty four office? Yeah, who's doing the commercial part? Um, so that was um, uh, what's his name? I just talked to him the other day. Um, Hope he's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe nobody's listening. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> this might be the last. We might be the last ones to hear this. <laughs> um, yeah, his kid played basketball or baseball yeah. too. Uh, yeah. Darn it. Yeah, because he played baseball in college. Yeah. Yeah, his parents live right down the street from my sister. Man, I'm just brain, I can't think of I'm his name. For it. I can't either, and that's horrible because he's a good dude. I got his name right, or his head, his face is right there in my brain. I just can't think of his name. Yeah, it'll come to me in a second. That was back. That was back in the day when Jen was actually working on the office, and yeah, it was just a hot mess. And, and then we blew out the, that second office and opened that up. And yep, that was a lot of work. And then so we got that, and then we moved. And then we and then we moved back out of that second office into the one. Yeah. Then we got this one. Scaled. This one's been great. Yeah, this, this one has been this, cool. this, this was yeah, this was awesome. And then we got Spring Hill. Spring Hill, that was a lot of work. Man, I mean, I remember driving up there like every day, blowing out walls and tearing stuff down. Yeah, and we had like, he had like a Saturday free or something. Mike's like, "Hey, let's go up." <laughs> All right. That landlord Steve, he was like. He'd walk in and look at me and go, the fuck are you doing to my building? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, like, relax. It, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And you're like, I don't know. put it all back together. He's like, his eyes are just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is not good. This is not good. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then when we were wrapping up, he's like, holy cow, man. I can't believe it turned out like this. <laughs> I, He just did not expect it to look like it I've, I've just learned that over years. It's like, like through watching people like artists and stuff like that, when you walk up and it's like, what the hell are you drawing or painting or whatever? It's like, just leave them alone yeah. and look at the end result. You know, it's like construction, the same thing. Cause it looks like crap. Yeah. You're um, digging trenches and it doesn't look like anything. Oh, that's where pipes are going. Yeah. And then now you're doing this and that. Oh, now you're putting wood up. What, why are you putting wood up on the dirt? Oh, <laughs> cause you're pouring a slab. Oh, and then, uh, yeah. you know, it just keeps going and going and going. Next yeah. thing you got a house. Yeah, it's we, interesting. You ever watch those guys that do the spray paint art? Yeah. And they just take like they have all these cans of spray paint, different and like and like little cardboard and forms, cutouts things, yeah, and they and just stencils, and they got like a frisbee that they do something with, and they got all kinds of different things, and then 
Like they start off just spraying stuff and going all over the place, and I'm just, you look at it, and go, what the, what, are, what are you doing? Uh, this is just a mess. And then by the time they're done, it's like, oh my god. The ones that freak me out is when they when they take all the stencils and they do that kind of stuff and everything, and they're sitting there doing it, and they, and they do like fourteen layers. Oh yeah. And then they just take the whole thing and turn it upside down. And it's like that's what they're doing. I was like, wait, wait. So you did that? Upside what the hell down. are you doing upside down? Yeah. Yeah. That's just that's just amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we just had that done when well, you just redid your bathroom. We just had that done at our place with our bathroom. It's like I'd walk in there and see stuff. I'm just like, I'm uh, I'm not saying anything. Dust everywhere and yeah. ripping out beams and, you know, bare concrete floors and chunks out of the floor and everything like that. It's like, it, 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 just make it work. That'll look good when it's done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or it won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did we got forced it looks good, so, yeah. Oh, so then, um, yeah, so I, I came here and uh, been here ever since. So you're the head of the Gray Bear Group. Yeah, the head of the Gray Bear Group. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another reason why we should remember his name, because it's like when I had that 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 contest thing, he, he's the one that nailed the Gray Bear Group. Who? What was his name? Not the, the guy with the office next to Brady's. Oh, um, darn it. It was trying to tip my tongue just now. <laughs> Shoot. How can I not remember? This is horrible. We love everybody that we've worked with. But. I know. <laughs> I, I want can't. to say Brian or Ryan, but it's not. No. I can't. I can't. It's it it's just it's amazing. I, I, I can't believe we're both brain farted the exact same I time. Know. But yeah, but he but we he's doing it a little more loosen our brain. Exactly, up. exactly. Well, we may just pause this and just go. <laughs> <laughs> go check a beer. <laughs> but yeah, so so I, I had that contest because I was trying to figure out what to what to call the group and you know what to call it and what what to brand it. He was the one that came up with the. Gray bear group. Yeah, because I had that gray bear. I had the, the bear sitting on my oh, yeah, on my desk because right. one of my kids gave it to me. Yeah. You know, one of the little guys. And uh, what was the youngest kids you had? Like, what age did they start? We 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 had it cut off in the contract um, because my executive director wouldn't listen to me because I was just boots on the ground. I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I told him if we put ten, they would push it to eight. Because he wanted, he's like, you know, we won't get too many, but every once in a while we'll get an eight year old or something like that. And so he put it at eight, and they tried pushing a six year old on us one time. And it's like, dude, there's no way. I, just liability wise, seventeen year old, yeah, grown men, yeah, and they're and they're and, and going off and like and you and, have a little six or seven year old that's got temper problems and you know, and well, and the six and seven year old, like he would just like you know, the, the little guys would just be timid. You know, and rightly so. I mean, you got 250 pound guys in there. Yeah. You know, that are doing the Kodiak slam on each other when they when they start going off, and you got this little kid that's like ducking behind your leg. I almost feel like some of them will be like trying to prove a point or stand up. You know? Oh, oh, all the time. Yeah. It have, yeah, have it all the time. That and it, but go the, well. but the thing was, is like you know, if you didn't challenge, if they didn't have that resistance mm-hmm. to go with, so the really good staff wouldn't challenge and every once in a while you'd get like an hourly staff or something that i didn't hire and they end up going so it was like it is so it was just kind of it was a bad thing mm. but i had you know little the little guys were fun because most of the older guys would take them under their wing and well, that's good and, then they got kind of someone to mentor yeah you know and maybe they can share some of their experiences and things that help them cope and help them adjust to different things that, yeah. you know, sometimes a uh, counselor doesn't think of. Yeah. And the, and the bigger kids, like, I mean, I'm still in touch with, with several of them, you know, yeah. and the bigger guys that would do that kind of thing, you could just kind of tell that they had a more solid foundation to work with and they're, they're doing great. You know, they're, I got one that's working with kids and boys and girls clubs and he's doing a great job and loves it. And I got another one that's got his own, you know, that's a couple of them that have their own families and stuff. And, one of them that reaches out, he goes, oh, man. He's like, I just found out you are doing real estate. He goes, can I ask you a question? And it was after the fact. And, you know, and he's like, I really don't like the realtor. I, you know, he's not answering. He's, he doesn't tell me things. I'm like, have you asked him the question? You know, and he's like, no. I was like, well, dude. Yeah. It's the same thing we talked about. It's communicating. You got to tell him what you want and ask him a question. And 
give them the opportunity. And then if they don't do it, then move on that. I was like, but so he's asking. And so he went and asked the, the realtor the questions that he had and calls me back. He's like, oh, that worked out great, Mr. John. Thank you so much. He's like, you think I did okay with this house? This is what I got. And it was really cool because it was, you know, a lot of times when we're customers, they can't see the potential. They'll walk in and they'll see like multicolored walls or something like that or a layout in the kitchen that they don't like or cabinetry or something. And they can't see the bones. Yeah. And this kid could completely see the bones. He's like, yeah, I walked in. He goes, the whole house was like peach. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what do you mean peach? He goes, you don't like peach. He goes, like like 1980s, like it was peach and like blonde cabinetry and everything like that. And I'm just going, this looks like, like a girl's house, like an old girl's house. And so he went in there and took out all the cabinets, bought new cabinetry, repainted, did everything, and loves it. Wow. So it's kind of cool. Maybe um, Eric Perkins could sell it. Ah, <laughs> there you go. You got it. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it, Eric. Hit me. Eric, yeah. good job. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> yeah, I know. God, I could not believe it. Like, I literally just talked to him like a week or two ago. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good dude. Yeah, but he stays busy. He's doing good. Good. So, yeah, him. so all that kind of stuff. So. Well, cool. Yeah. So what's uh, what's next for John? <sighs> I'm trying to get to a point where I can like actually look at retirement at some stage in the game. That would be super 58, cool. 58, that would be like awesome. Yeah. You know, take some time and just go, go do some watch trips. sports and just kind of chill. chill. Yeah. yeah. We got buck season coming up. That's around the corner. Yeah. When's the first preseason? Next, uh, it's Saturday. This Saturday, Saturday right? Yeah. Okay. Against the Dolphins, 730. You know what we should do? We should have a we should put a TV in here and like watch the game live and we have a TV in here now. Why not like put one up here so we could like Oh yeah you know, talk about how crappy the play calling is or Oh do like the Manning yeah, Brothers. Yeah, you know, we can talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like that's freaking ref suck. <laughs> I can't believe I missed that call. Have you watched that Monday Night Football with the Mannings? Yeah. Oh my that's the best. That's pretty funny, yeah. That's the best. I'll I watch that over Monday Night Football or regular anytime. Yeah. You know. Well, it's Interesting because they have such a different perspective on the game, which really, I guess, most of the an- announcers were were players themselves. Um, like, I can't stand Tony Romo. I can't stand his voice. What about Chris Collinsworth? He drives me nuts. He sounds. Yeah. He talks like he's like he's a multi time Super Bowl champion, and it's like, dude, you were listen, and you, you were a good receiver, in Florida. You were a walk on, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like you had a decent, you had a good career with the Bengals. Yeah. But show me your ring. You haven't got any. <laughs> right. Well, Romo, I can't stand listening to him, but when he does say things, I'm like, pretty smart. Oh, yeah. Like, he'll say stuff, and I'm like, man, he's on in tune with what's going on. He yeah. knows the aspects of the game. He knows uh, what play calls should be coming up. He knows, like, what, uh, you know, positions people are in and what different schemes people are running and uh, he picks that stuff up like right away. Yeah, I just can't stand his voice. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. something about that twang. Yeah, I don't know. He's just, I don't know. But I love listening to the uh, the Mannings, and they have that same kind of thing where they've they're like experts at the game. Yeah, you know. But here's the like, thing with the Manning: the difference between the Mannings and like the studio, like the Romos and everything mm-hmm. like that. Is the Mannings are experts at the game, and they're also brothers. So yeah. they, they just talk Constantly, shit just yeah, all the oh time. Yeah. That's the best. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, the, only, that's, way to, that's, that's what, the only way to watch football. That's what makes it entertaining. And then they get, like, you know, then they'll get, like, the wild card guest in there every once in a while. You know, like when uh, when they had, they had Beast Mode in there. And it's like, you know. I saw the one they had the Snoop Dogg. Yeah. And trying to corral those guys. It's just like, yeah, yeah you're you're just off and running. Good luck with that. It's just funny the digs that they have on each other, and they're like, oh, yeah. oh, I would have thrown the ball. I would have, I would have made, I would have completed that pass. Not like you in uh, that game, whatever <laughs> game, you know. <laughs> it's talking shit nonstop. <laughs> uh, that's brotherly stuff. There. Yeah, and that's and that's the, the the killer is that not only do they remember their own careers, but they also remember their brother's career because they watched mm-hmm. each other so tightly, you know. Yep. Yeah, they just, they just talk all sorts of stuff. It's great. It'd be interesting uh, being an NFL quarterback that's got a ring or two and then watching your brother play for a ring. Yeah. And it's like, oh, motherfucker. 
I'm not on the field. That son of a bitch. I'm going to hear about this at Christmas. Shit. So we went to, Barry and I went to New Orleans and we did, we were like walking around. They have, you know, those walking tours and, and everything that's, that's, you know, self-guided on whatever app. And so we're walking around and uh, we come around the corner and there's like Andrew Jackson's house and this, that, and the other thing. And we come around the corner and we're like, now if you're standing at this house and you see this fence and this, that, you're standing at the home of the Manning family. And I'm just like, oh, that's where they were raised. And it was like, Archie? It was, it was Archie's house. And it's like, wow. that's where all the boys were raised. Could you, you imagine? Know? I mean, the amount of money that came out of that house. Oh, woo! <laughs> I mean, just piles of money. Can you imagine Archie at Christmas time? It's like, that's yeah. it? That, you know you know what I made when I was an NFL quarterback playing for the Saints, getting my head knocked in? Yeah, it's barely, like, you, you got like leather helmets and stuff. <laughs> It's like, and you guys are like Super Bowl champions and all these commercials mm-hmm. and all this kind of crap. And he's like, I'm doing like local car dealership stuff. And yeah, he's like, and then and you get me like, you know. But he raised. High karate. <laughs> oh, he raised the. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, the 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 sons. And the and now the grandsons. Yeah. Arch is too? like. Arch just committed to Texas. Oh, wow. Which is really strange. I'm just like, Texas? They have like. Five Hall, their most recent Hall of Famer was Earl Campbell, hmm. and he could have gone like anywhere he wanted. You know, Alabama wanted him, Mississippi wanted yeah, why him, not Alabama, Georgia. That's, well, I guess the only reason you don't go to a school like Alabama is if you think there's a chance you're probably not going to play for your first two or three years. Yeah, I mean, how good is he? Yeah, you know, well, and Alabama's got, I mean, Saban. Isn't you know he's not exactly warm fuzzy. No, he's I don't think gonna, so. If you're a kid, that's he's not going to bullshit you. He's going to tell yeah. you, "Hey, guess what? We want you. Yeah, we'll develop you. There's a good chance you won't ever play. Yeah, right. But you'll be on our team. Yeah, and we'll probably win a ring, and you'll get to have a ring. Or you step up and you evolve and you become a starter. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know. imagine Saban kind of pussyfooting around with stuff like that. I think he yeah, just tells the guys like, hey. And I is... think I think part of the draw probably is like he's got a chance to build something on his own too. You know, with Texas, it's like the last real legit quarterback, you know, Texas had was what, probably Chris Sims? Um, I don't think they've had, they had a... Longhorns. I don't think they've... They had Major yeah. Applewhite. They had that one quarterback. Or was he, West, no, he was West Virginia. They had a national championship. Um, oh, 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 uh, Vince Young. Vince Young. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, okay, and his pro career was short. Yeah, it was whatever. Yeah. It's weird to watch, like, some of these quarterbacks that, I mean, just absolutely crush it in the in college, and then they go off to the NFL, and you think, this guy's going to be the next big thing, and they – Kind of crap the bed. Yeah. Know, two years, they're done. Yeah. And yeah. then some other guy, like Tom Brady comes out of, you know, he's like, what, a, I forget what draft he was. He was, he was like, like 200 or something. He yeah, was like six-round like, pick in, out of Michigan. Out of Michigan. And then who would have thought? Yeah. That's wild. He's dead. Yeah. I can't believe Gronk didn't sign. Yet. Uh, he, I, 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 still, I still think he's just, he doesn't want to train camp. <laughs> I mean, lazy he fucker. Doesn't, he doesn't want to drink. Why? He's, he's all on cruises. He's doing his thing, you know. Uh, Brady's man. the one that's like, you know, got to, you know, eat right, say your prayers, do your exercise, do your vitamins and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, he's only a month different from me. He's 45, so. Yeah. Yeah. I just love the fact We're that he's a like. a month apart. I just love the fact that he's like, yeah, because well, now you're, you got a high schooler now. Yeah. Which makes you, yeah, buddy, you're getting right there with me. You're getting to that, that. Where they start talking about you with the with that letter O starting at the <laughs> it's getting old. The old man. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, you know, they got I just don't think I just don't think Gronk wants to do training camp. Brady's the one that absolutely loves it. I mean, he he's home for what, like forty days with the kids and just sounds like Get out go, of that. Go, go. Yeah. You're annoying I mean, me now. Well, they, they make it sound like it's like it's, all, like it's all like it's all the guy's decision, you know? And yeah. anybody who's married understands it's like, okay, if you have a job where it takes you away 
and your wife is used to running the show and then you come in, you're just another one that's underfoot. Now you're being annoying. Yeah. Go back to your job. Well, that's so one of the girls I went to school with, um, I think I told you that her, her son is Eric Amarola, the NASCAR driver. Okay. And he made a big thing out of the beginning of the season. He's like, this is going to be my last season. I want to spend more time with my kids. I want to spend more time with my family and everything. And now as it's going on, it's kind of like he's leaning more towards coming back. And I'm just, I'm just thinking to myself, it's like, it, the wife has got to play a role in that and say, listen, yeah, how, how long can you possibly do this? You can't go back and do it when you're in your fifties, keep doing it, stash the money away, right? Stay out of my way. <laughs> right. Stop then, bothering me. Yeah. And then when you're, when you're done, the kids will be a little bit older. We can go do things together as a family. And yeah, I like sleeping in and yeah. not with you. Like <laughs> I want to be able to stretch out. <laughs> I like when you go to, Go to the office at 4 a.m. Yeah. and go start training. And then, or maybe uh, she's thinking, man, you've been off for a couple of weeks and you're starting to get a little chubby there. You know, you might need to hit the gym. You need to get back on, on, on that field. Get in there. Yeah. It's like, stop messing with the Traeger grill while you're Smithfield ham there, buddy. Yeah. I think uh, it's, it's kind of wild how much money Giselle makes. I mean, she's, she's the one. Yeah. She's, he found the one woman that makes more money than he does. He's probably lost all his money in crypto. If he keeps buying that crap up, (laughs) he's got all these crypto commercials. I'm like, shit, I hope he ain't buying it right now. And then he like buys. So the boat that he had in the boat parade, which was, what was it? Dutch, right? It was, he had it. There's like three of them that were made out of the the Netherlands. And it was like ridiculously gorgeous. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, like three months after the boat parade, he's announcing that he's going he's buying the next one that's bigger for that. And you know, he lives on a Clearwater beach. I mean, it's not like he's got a ton of room. It's not like you can, you can pull an ocean liner there. I mean, he's got deep water because he's on the intercoastal side, but still, it's, I'm like, dang, dude, when yeah. is no? I mean, he could he could have pretty much as big a boat as he wants. I mean, he could probably fit a 150 footer if he wanted to. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just huge. When we were down there and we, we went down for our anniversary, Mary was like, show me where Tom Brady lives. Show me where he lives. So we just went driving through there. I, so uh, was, I did it. When I had my survey company, I did um, a house. It was in between. It was next to uh, uh, Brad Culpepper. And then they were building uh, Derek Jeter's house. And it was like in between there. Because I guess I think Culpepper lived like two or three houses down, and um, we were just like, "Holy shit, man! Look at this freaking house! Derek Jeter's building it. it is insane." So here, so here's the thing too. Let's talk real estate. Let's talk Jeter's house. You know, he sold it. Mm. They're tearing it down. They're building the bigger house there. So all those people that live on the island are going to lose their minds again because the reason they were losing it with Jeter wasn't because it was Jeter. It wasn't because he was building the big house. Those roads are so narrow that when you bring in all those trucks, you can't get by them. Oh, yeah. So it was now, a nightmare. When I was doing my job, I was like, God, what a freaking pain in the ass getting yeah. this road. So now, so now they're going to tear it down. So now they got, like, these trucks that are coming in with demo equipment. Now they got to haul all that crap out. Then they're going to – then they're now, – so now it's going to be twice as much within a few years. Yeah, and regulations are different. Uh, it's harder to get materials. It's going to take twice as long to build. <sighs> Yeah, just yeah. I mean, just the cost of just the cost of wood. It would be the, that's crazy that you would buy a house like that to tear it down. Uh, I almost think it would be cheaper to buy like two or three houses in a row. Yeah, for five million each rather than spending thirty five million dollars on one. Yeah, I don't know. To tear that that's down. why yeah. they have millions of dollars, and I don't. <laughs> exactly. like, apparently, they know more than me. Exactly. <laughs> That's like the people down in Sarasota when Vinick moved in, and they're like, "Oh, he's tearing down a perfectly good mansion." And it's like, it's yeah. not what he likes. He's got yeah. the money, and he wants to take it down. And all he's going to do is run your run your property value up. So, I mean, what's the, you know, what's the issue with that? That's crazy using that as a comp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. We're gonna we're under contract for ten million. Uh, what's the comps in that area? <laughs> oh, well, there's Jeter's house. It was like. Yeah. What did it end up selling for? Like 30, 35, I, I, something I like that? I can't remember. I don't remember either. I might not even be close, but. It was just it was, it was just massive. I just remember seeing it from the water side. I took one of those cruises, and 
you go by. It's like it's impressive from the street side. Yeah, it's crazy from the water side. And the sun goes down on that side. So you got those sunsets. It'd be interesting to just hang out on the back there in the evening because I'm sure it's got like some ridiculous pool and oh, yeah. ridiculous views and like you know zero. Uh, what was that? The um, infinity pool. The infinity you know? pool. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like it was crazy. Yeah. But it's like like in every window known to man, it's just it was crazy. Yeah. So, mm. and, you know, almost like my house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We hit that Powerball. So it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the retirement plan. <laughs> we were down in the Keys, and the Powerball's at like 1.2 billion or whatever, and we're like, holy shit, man! If we win, we just won't come back. We're just gonna start shopping. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I posted a thing on Facebook. I was like, "Yeah, we we won two dollars on the Powerball, so we'd appreciate four. we'd appreciate our privacy while we're we're deciding yeah. what to do with the money." <laughs> yeah, I ended up winning four. There you go. And I, it was funny because I went to check my ticket and it went cha ching, and I was like, "Holy shit, man! If it's even like a million or something, I'm like, I'm like four bucks. Yeah, oh well, <laughs> I'll just wrap it into the next one." <laughs> uh, how are the keys? How was the how was the lobster? Um, it was okay. It was blowing like crazy. Wind was not good. Weather wasn't great. Um, the areas we normally do really well in were pretty murked up. Couldn't hardly see. Um, we didn't spend a whole lot of time on the Atlantic side because it was so rough. But overall, I mean, it was fun. Fun trip. Had the new boat down there. How did it do? How did it do down there? I did great. With the, just, with the rough season, everything is still. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally different. Uh, it's only different ball game than the other one. Yeah, it's crazy because it's only a couple of feet longer, but it's just so much bigger. It's just wider. It's uh, almost two feet wider. Yeah, Sides it looked, are higher. It, yeah, it looked like it was massive. Yeah, it's standing in mind the new one, and because I still got both of them, so yeah. I got the other one in the garage next to it, and you just stand in the big one and look at the little one. It's like. This is freaking so much bigger. Really? Yeah. And how many how many more feet long is it? It's a twenty seven foot. So my other one's um, basically a, a two forty three. So it's, I think, technically it's like twenty four and a half feet. Yeah. But this one's a twenty seven, which I think it's, you know, it's like a twenty seven four or something like that is what it ends up being, if you actually measure it. So it's you know. Like three feet different, but just stability wise, it just makes a big difference. Oh yeah, just the weight, the, the way it sits up higher, um, the width, higher sides. I mean, it's just it's night and day. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we got to get you out there and catch yeah. the fish. Hell yeah! I'm like chomping the bit to go fishing again. Every time I did, every time I try to do it, something comes up. I was like, just yeah. We need to do a, uh, so I think we're going to wrap Mike's boat and have uh, um, Team Sam Peak inshore on it, and then we'll have Team Sam Peak offshore on mine. Oh, there you go. We'll wrap mine, too. Oh, so I'll cool. offshore and we'll the inshore, and we'll put Captain Caleb on his and Captain Realtor on mine. <laughs> Captain Caleb. <laughs> Mike will never touch it again. <laughs> he doesn't touch it now. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, he does. He takes it out. Yeah. He's doing pretty good with it. Um, I saw Josh was running the other day. Yeah. They've all been running it. They've been doing good with it. Of course, Josh uh, will be running Josh is going to school pretty soon, isn't he? Yeah. I think he leaves, like, this next week. He might even leave this. No. Is it next week? I don't know. He's leaving soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Mike. He's, like, counting out. He's, he's going. <laughs> he's heading uh, to Gainesville so he can do virtual school. <laughs> I think most of his stuff's virtual too. It's funny. Jeez. <laughs> uh, but you need that experience. Yeah. You know, you got to go to the, um, what is that, eight seconds there. And there's so many. I wonder how many bars have closed since I've been there. You probably closed most of them. I've closed a bunch. I've been kicked out of a couple of them too. <laughs> I remember the Purple Porpoise was awesome because they had, a, I think at 12 o'clock, they opened up and it was like across from the stadium. And they would start off with uh, 
nickel pitchers. A pitcher for a nickel. Nice. Perhaps blue ribbon, but whatever. Yeah. You know. So, and then every hour it would double until it hit a certain amount, you know. So, until like four or five o'clock, it was. Yeah, right. I mean, gangbusters. There's tons of people in there chugging away, you know. <laughs> I remember just chugging a whole pitcher. They're like going, oh, it's getting ready to go back up. I'm like, go, 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 go. <laughs> Give me another one. <laughs> I don't want to spend another quarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, 40 cents on a pitcher. That's just that's too much. Crazy. That's outrageous. Yeah, because we used to highway robbery. We had nickel beer night like in Clearwater. I was like, yeah, highway robbery. <laughs> we, had the, we had the nickel beer night in Clearwater. I can't remember the name of the place, but there was, uh, I want to say Scarlet's for that. I think they said it was a strip club. But there, but there was a place right there like Nursery 19. And it was nickel beer night, and and you just go until somebody broke the seal, and it's like you you know one of your boys would go, I gotta go to bed. No, you don't. <laughs> you better not. It's like you're not moving. It's like the whole bar would be pissed at you. We had um, there was a like they would take these houses and turn them into clubs. Yeah. So we went into this one, and everyone's partying, whatever you know, drinking and stuff, and um, I'm like, oh shit got to take a leak. Yeah, I better go find a bathroom. And I go looking around, and, like, there's nothing inside. So I go out back, and there's, a like, two portalettes in the backyard. And the line was, like, crazy. And so I get in the line. I'm like, oh, I should have started this, like, ten minutes ago because there ain't no way I'm going to make it that long. So I'm like, screw it. I go on the side of the house, start pissing. And <laughs> flashlight's on me. <laughs> Here's a security guy. Let's go. You're out. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> so I text everybody. I'm like, hey, I, I got kicked out. I'll see you at the next bar. <laughs> so I go to the next bar. And uh, they had just got there. And I'm like, same thing. I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom again. Dang it. These beers are running through me. Same problem. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm not doing that again on the side of the building. So I'm like, oh, here's a door. What does that go to? Oh, it's a closet. I'll just go in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> Nice. I like, shut the closet door and uh, like just started going. The door opens, flashlight. <laughs> the fuck are you doing, <laughs> dude? I had to go. Sorry, <laughs> you're out. Dang it again. <laughs> same guy, same flashlight. No, it was a totally different guy. But yeah, there was a actually there was a team of them that time. The the first one it was just the one guy and he was like, "You got to go. You're out." I'm like, all right, well, what do you expect, man? You need to get some more bathrooms. You know, it's crazy. You have two bathrooms. You got 100 people standing in line to go to the bathroom. And then, but the other one in the closet, I mean, there was like four or five of them. They're like, we need to, I was surprised they didn't like pick me up and throw me out. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. There were some fun nights. We we ended up at, uh, um, I never like was into any of the drug scenes. But we ended up at some uh, abandoned house that was, like, half built. So, like, all the walls, there was, like, um, it was, like, out in the middle of nowhere in the woods. And then there was, exterior was pretty much done. But inside, like, they haven't done any of the drywall. They didn't put any of the electrical up. So it was just, like, framed. And I walk in, and I got, like, a 12-pack of beer. And I see, like, there's, like, four or five coolers these people, you know, the lights going, they got this music and stuff going, people are dancing, and they had the glow sticks and stuff, and they're going crazy, and I opened the cooler up to put my beer in, and I'm like, freaking water in this cooler. So I open the next one up, I'm like, water in that one. Next one. There's no beer in any of these coolers. I'm like, I'm not putting my fucking beer in these coolers. (laughs) It'll be gone in three seconds. I'm not going to have the only one. I I held it under my arm, and I'm like, I'm just going to. And then I realized, oh, they're all in ecstasy. Uh, and they're yeah. like raving and doing some weird crap with their glow sticks. And this, this one dude, he's doing this like, almost like he's got nunchucks, you know, with his glow sticks. He's flinging them around and he's like coming towards me with them. And I'm like, you hit me with that fucking glow stick. I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> and this other guy, he was, he had one in his mouth and he was doing something and he ended up biting too hard on it. And I just uh, see the liquid running down his chin. I'm like, that's toxic. <laughs> I'm like, that can't be good. That's not good. <laughs> Besides the glasses now in your mouth from the. <laughs> uh, oh, man. 
Yeah, so I was like, this is a weird party. I think I should leave. <laughs> I'm not getting along with any of these people. I don't understand what they're talking about. I don't understand what they're doing. Like, they're having fun, and I'm like, this music sucks. And uh, the light thing with the glow sticks, I'm just not I'm not seeing the trails like they're talking about. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like, those do the trails. But I sure as hell wasn't going to put my beer in one of them coolers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just drink it away. You don't even know. Well, I guess they drink water, and it like does something. Like it makes them feel good or something to drink water. I have no idea. Apparently, this is the rumor on the streets. So it is. I guess I don't know, but there was, you know, four coolers full of water, yeah. and I'm like, there's 150 people here, and there's no beer. I'm the only one with beer. I thought people would be chasing me around, trying to get a beer from me. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> So it wasn't my kind of scene, so we we left. We just we I remember one there was one party in Clearwater. And my old man was a Clearwater cop. And so we're all it was a house party and I can't remember what it was. I think it was briefly it was just it was shortly after high school, but we're all in this house and there was there were younger kids and us and everybody. There was just a whole mix and there was some kids smoking weed and you know, we're just drinking and getting stupid and but it was in the middle of a residential area in countryside and sure enough you go all the here comes all the clear water pd and everybody starts beating feet and i'm like <laughs> and i just i started i was i was like trying out for the track team for the u.s olympic team i was gone <laughs> last thing i wanted to do was get caught by one of those guys and oh you're will freeman's kid oh it's like yeah no I, I didn't need that kind of beat down just let me go so I just take off because every time I get I I do something stupid, and you know like I, there was one time I was leaving work I worked at Sears Town back in the day and and, uh, and I bought new huge tires on my truck, so I pulled out on Missouri and it was raining, and I just romped on it and when the tires caught of course you got that big bark that roof, and uh, so I get pulled over by Clearwater PD and the license registration so I give them the registration and I pulled out my license and they're like. Freeman, you ain't in relation to Will Freeman? I was like, yeah, that's my dad. We're going to let you go with a warning. No, 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 please just give me the ticket. It's yeah. like the, the warning doesn't do me any favors. And sure enough, I just go, oh, I see the name got you off again. It's just, I would just get lectured forever. It's like, oh, dear God, just give me the ticket. <laughs> yeah. Now, I had a uh, similar with my dad being principal at my high school yeah and uh some of the teachers would uh let me get away with stuff but some of them were the complete opposite you know they'd be tattletaling every little thing i did and my dad would just be like great I'd go, hey so uh yeah miss so-and-so came and saw me today and she heard what you said in the, in the hallway and i'm like uh, what did i say Apparently you said the S word. I was like, oh, well, maybe. <laughs> he goes, you see the kind of shit I have to put up with? <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't swear and don't do anything in front of her. She's a tattletale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. So, yeah, high school was interesting. My first day of high school. So I went to golf high or golf middle. Uh, I knew a bunch of the guys from that went to Baynet that transferred up to Ridgewood. But, you know, I was zoned for golf. And my first day, I didn't know too many people, but I knew a bunch of the, you know, some of the guys from sports and stuff. And uh, I just remember going to, to PE class and, you know, you dress out, everybody lines up in the gym. And, you know, you're on this line, and then the, the coaches will call your, your last name. You step forward if you're present. So I, they go, Luke Hart. I step forward, and I'll, I just look, and I hear everybody go, pow, 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 that's, that's Luke Hart. That's Luke Hart. You can just see them all down the whole thing. Going, that's Luke Hart's son. I was like, oh, jeez. So then, you know, we played basketball or whatever, and getting changed, and I am got, you know, dressed, and I'm putting my shoes on. I'm just sitting there putting my tying my shoes, and this guy, I see his feet in front of my feet, and he's a freaking big ass dude. I look up, and he's got like a beard, and I'm like, 
looking at him, <laughs> looking up at him. I'm like, hello. And he goes, you're Lucard's son? I go, yep. He goes, yeah. Your dad gave me 10 days OSS last year. And I'm like, oh, fuck, man. My first day, I'm going to get my ass <laughs> I'm going to get beat. This sucks. <laughs> and then uh, he goes, your dad's awesome. They were trying to expel me. And uh, he fought for me. And I only got the 10 days. Oh, that's cool. And I'm like, oh, man, that went different in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was getting my ass kicked my first day. But yeah, that's what move, moving down here like at 15. That's how I met everybody in my neighborhood was I just beat the hell out of everybody. It's like made friends with a next door neighbor and then everybody messed with his stuff. And I just end up beating them up. I literally beat up all the kids in my neighborhood. And that's how I met them all. So you were a bully? No, I was an idiot. I, I, <laughs> I just, Bullies are idiots. It, you know. yeah, yeah, Donnie, uh, Donnie lived next door to us, and he was a good guy, and he befriended my parents, and uh, and he he was always looking out. And <laughs> he gave me such great advice, like when you're dating in high school, go ahead, get engaged. You can be engaged forever. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> That's not real it's, commitment. It's like, no, Mr. <laughs> South Indiana, we're not doing that. <laughs> you, can, you can back out of that one. Yeah. It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. But then he was also the one that, that like, uh, he, he'd buy old, he worked for a phone company. And he'd buy old phone company vans and he'd paint them. And, and they'd look great out of his mm-hmm. garage. So I was like, cool. I got my first car, 70 Plymouth Duster. And I was like, hey, Donnie, you think we can paint this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you just get it ready and, you know, primer it. Uh, just, you know, tape it up and get it all ready. We'll push it in there. We'll get it done. So I bought, like, Imron emerald green paint. It was just this gorgeous, deep metal flake paint. And had it all taped up and had everything taken care of and had a little bit of Bondo work on the backside, just a little tiny bit, like the size of a cell phone. And uh, all ready to go. And like he's, a iPhone Pro or like the... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's painted his garage, and, and I'm just watching him do it, and then he just looks at me, and when it's done, he goes, uh-oh. So what do you mean, uh-oh? He goes, well, let me see. And he grabs the paint and he goes, oh. What's the problem, Don? He goes, well, this here says uh, three parts thinner to one part paint. I said, okay, what'd you do? He goes, I uh, did three parts paint to one part thinner. My car had, like, shark skin. It was, <laughs> he, like, kitchen matches <laughs> off. It was, like, I never washed it again because it was just, it was that thick and it was, like, sandpaper. And uh, and we ran around with a box of kitchen matches in the passenger seat so the guys could light it off the off the car. Wow! And light their cigarettes like off. Sandpaper. Of yeah, it was ridiculous. Wow! But my first car was a '77 Chevy Malibu Classic, four door. Nice piece of <laughs> shit. <laughs> Woo! That thing was a pile. <laughs> but I treated it like the General Lee jumped it and <laughs> slamming into stuff and busting through fences. <laughs> That's what you do with your first car. I actually car. had the uh, Dukes Hazard horn on it, too. Oh, did Yeah. I'd show up to school. <laughs> <laughs> we, took, we took my first car, and I uh, went over to a buddy's house, and uh, he was an older buddy from church, and we, we pulled out the front bench, and I bought these buckets off a, off a Challenger, and we dropped those in, and he's drilling through, and it was in his, uh, and he, and he just stopped smoking. It was in his garage. He had like the one car garage, concrete floor, and he had all the wooden, um, wooden shelves on each side. And he's drilling through to put the seats in, and all of a sudden, you just hear like liquid on the concrete floor. He goes, "Oh shit!" So when he's drilling through, I mean, it's just metal, so there's sparks flying everywhere. He goes, oh shit! I said, like, "What?" And I'm looking down there, and he drilled right through the fuel line. All the sparks flying everywhere. He goes, hey. <laughs> "He's like." Yeah, he goes, we should probably stop that. So we clamped it up, and then we stepped outside. He goes, yeah, I picked the wrong week to stop smoking. Wow. <laughs> it's like, holy crap. I had a, that same car had a gas leak. I jumped something, or I hit a rock, or a, who knows what. Uh, I would, Literally, that thing, like the General Lee, I would, drove through all kinds of crap. I was in mud holes. I was in all kinds of stuff. Somehow, I got a, a like a... Something hit the gas tank and it like made a wrinkle in it, and it had like a little hole in it, so it would it would drip. But I would take like first I took like the bar of soap and I just jam it in the crack, you know, and it would it would last for a couple of days. 
And then I started using wax, uh, like a wax candle, jamming it in there. Yeah. It worked for a couple of days. And, um, and I mean, it got pretty bad. So my sister had an FBLA meeting and she didn't have her car. So she goes, Hey, can I borrow your car to go do my FBLA meeting? I'm like, all right, here I go. But make sure you put the gas, the, the coffee can underneath the gas tank <laughs> so that when the gas leaks out, you got to pour it back in the tank. And she's like, all right, all right, you know. And uh, I hear, like, like at the end of, like, third or fourth period, someone comes up and goes, oh, man, your sister. I heard she got a uh, – we were at the FBLA meeting, and the, the fire department showed up and <laughs> – Pulled her out of the out of the FBLA. <laughs> nice. Is this your car, ma'am? <laughs> so the only trouble Jamie really got to do is because of you. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah, mostly me. Yeah. Guilty by association. <laughs> yeah, but I guess there's like, she was like parked by like they have like the propane tank that you know that. Um, oh, perfect. Uh, she was like by that, and it was like dripping down the sidewalk and going down the gutter, and they're like, if that would have went up, that would have been really bad. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh, well, hey, listen. This has already been over an hour. Oh, my goodness. This is fun. It didn't seem like that. I know. Well, it took us like 20 minutes to remember Eric's name. I know, right? <laughs> Jeez, what a bunch of dicks we are. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. God, we're... God, uh, you remember everybody else except for Eric. Yep. Well, um, I guess let everybody know um, how they can find you. Yeah, um, so you can uh, email me at john at sandpeakrealty.com or give me a call, 813-610-8770, or send me a text message. Um, pretty Facebook. much always there. You're on Facebook. Facebook, yeah, I'm on okay. Facebook. Um, you Instagram and Twitter, any of that? Uh, yeah, not as much as I should. I need yeah. to do more of that. Um, yeah, you need to do more of that. I Come do. on, get with the program. I, you do more of that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So, well, hey, I'm, I'm it's there. been fun. Let's wrap this sucker up. All right, man. Sounds good. You guys any kind of exit music or? Um, I can. Let's do, uh, how about Let's... this one? Oh, that's great. That yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> there we go. I'll do a laugh track. There you go. Applause. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right. See All right. you, everybody. See you guys.